گفتیم ورزش دومیش فود فور برین گفتیم مثلا الان میدونیم امگا توی از چیزای خیلی خوبه مگنیزیوم پوتاسیوم از چیزای خیلی خوبیه لوندر اویل از چیزای بسیار خوبیه و بله فلکسی بله اینا خب همش لیستش هست دیگه فود فور برین لیستش از خود کلینیک دانیل آمن هم داره تو اون کنفرانس 13 هم, هم مفصل ازش صحبت خواهیم کرد ولی کن ولی چیز دیگه ای که بسیار اهمیت داره اینه که ما بدونیم که یعنی این باور بره تو مغزمون که آر تات ریلی ماترز یعنی این مغز و وقتی با افکاری آکوپای میکنیم واقعا رو مدل زندگی و رفتار و مودمون اثر میذاره حالا یه بحث بسیار مفصلی هست که چطوری افکار منفی میرون قسمت لیمبیک سیستم یا خواستگاه عواطف ما رو به هم میریزه دیستورشن توش به وجود میاره بنابراین جدی این مسئله Your thought really matters They can either help or hurt your deep limbic system افکار یا بخش عمیق خواستگاه عواطف رو کمک میکنن که احساسات خوب بیرون میاد حالی خوش با آدم دست میده مثل وقتی که ما صدای خانم خوجسته رو میشنم که امیدواریم امشب پنگ دقیقه بشنمیم بنوان حسنی جشن فارغ و تحصیلی مون اون کال خوشیه که با آدم دست میده خب یا اینکه نه به آدم حال ناخوش دست میده و اون مال افکار مشبهش و بله شما دیدید که یه موقعی میگی من میدونم که خانم دکتر لیلی تبریزی معمولا دوست نداره که رکوگنایز بشه ایشون اگر دلش بخواد و حوصله کنه میتونه راجع به واقعی بودن انرژی و نقش انرژی در زندگی ما و اینکه انرژی های مثبت و منفی چقدر ریلا میتونه صحبت کنه ایشون رشتهش به اصطلاح برق و... نه نمیدونم الان دوست داشته باشه لیلی جان دوست داری سه چهار دقیقه صحبت کنی نه خیلی خوب به به گربه گفتن چیچی درمون روش و خوشون خب نه به هر حال اون چی که مسلمه افکار منفی انرژی های منفی تولید میکنن و افکار مثبت انرژی های مثبت و این میره تو دیپ لیمبیک سیستم و حال ما یا خراب میشه یا حال ما خوش میشه خب بنابراین اگر افکار ماترز اگر اینکه چه نوع افکاری به ما حال خوش میده و چه نوع افکاری به ما حال بد میده اگر انتای یا افکار منفی واقعیت میتونن رو بیوشیمی مغز ما اثر بذارن ما چاره ای نداریم جز که یک اونها رو شناسایی کنیم دو آماده مبارزه باشون باشیم سه نیروی خودمون رو در اختیار انت ایتر بذاریم که نظر انت ها جون بگیرن روشون زیاد شد برای این موقع همیشه تو مغزمون یه چیزی داشته باشیم و اونی که این انت ها یا افکار منفی رو پلوشن ببینیم و اینفکشن افونت چرا دارم اینقدر بدش میکنم زشتش میکنم به دلیل اینکه همه اینقدر بد و زشت است اینفکشن اینفکشن وقتی تو بدن ما هست اگه آنتی بایوتیک نکنیم نخوریم چیکار میکنه ارگانای ما رو از بین میبره آسیب میزنه به ما تب میده حالمون رو بد میکنه میندازه ما رو تو بیمارستان عین همین کارم هم افکار منفی اگه شدید باشن در ما ما رو مونتا بیمارستان میفرسن ولی بخش دیگه نه بخش عفونی بنابراین حالا انت ها روبروی باهاشون یک فرمولی باهاشون بهتر کار میکنه به محض این که تو مغز میان شناساییش میکنی یعنی همون اولی که تو مغز میان شناساییش میکنی و به اسطلاح سعی کنی باشون چلنج کنی یه بار دیگه فقط برای این که مرور کنی نوت خودتون رو ببینین که انواع انتا چی هن انت سپیشیز یکیش always or never thinking که همیشه تو همیشه دیر میاد 
تو هرگز به فکر من نبودی تا این میاد تو مقصود یه دون از اون انتاس You never listen to me واقعیت این نیست Right now and here Right now you are not listening to me به واقعیت بسید دومین نوع اینا Mind reader The boss doesn't like me And I'm going to Get it soon or late رئیسم منو دوست نداره از قیافش میفهمم همین روزاست که یه برنامه واسه ما پیاده میکنه تا این میاد تو مغزه شناساییش کن این انته بعد بعدی فورچن تلر که گفتی پیشگویی میکنه پیشگویی نمیکنه اینو میبینی امروز با تو دوسته پس فردای خنجری از پشت بهت میزنه بعد چیز دیگه لیبرینگ که برچسب میزنه همین I'm stupid You are crazy You are stingy I'm dumb یا I'm not attractive این هم باز از اون مورچه هاست بعد مورچه بعدی که بازم درشته بلیم کردن It's your fault That we have a horrible marriage اگر تو اینقدر کار نکنی ما زندگیمون به اینجا نمیرسه اگر تو هیز نبودی، چشم هرز نداشتی، زندگی ما اینطوری نمیشد. بلینگی باز یکی از این انتای بزرگی. بنابراین این انواع انتا رو شناختیم، به محض اینکه میاد تو مغزمون بیاد، یه دونه میدونیم پولوشنه، دوم افونت ایجاد میکنه، سوم هر چی زودتر خرش رو بگیریم به نفع امونه، چهارم جوری که میتونیم خرش رو بگیریم اینه که ورزش کنیم، با به اسطلاح حالا الان دنیل آمنم میگه ساپورت گروه داشته باشیم احساسات خودمون رو به زبون بیاریم و یکی از مهمترین چیزهایی که هم دنیل آمن میگه هم کلینیک باستون گروه تاییدش کرده اینه که یکی از راه هایی که ما انت ایترامون رو تقویت کنیم اینه که خودمون رو در اطراف آدمایی قرار بدیم که پروواید اس ویت پوزیتیو باندینگ ویت پوزیتیو باندینگ یعنی آدمایی که حال ما رو میفهمن دلشون میخواد که ما تو حال خوب باشیم به جای حال بد وقتی که تو اندوه هستیم برا ما اونجا هستن و به ما احساس خوبی میدن راجع به خودمون یکی از دلایلی که من به تلفن‌های جورج کلونی جواب نمیدم اینو که میترسم بیاد کنار من هی بگه تو سن پس من زیاده من میخوام چه کنم این باند معیوبو من خیلی خوشحالم من خیلی خوشحالم که شی دازن لایک یه رقابت کم کرد حالا به هر حال یعنی یعنی واقعیت اینه که یو نید دی پیپل هو انجوی یو ساپورت یو لوف تو بی ویت یو گیو یو گود انرژی حسناتو میبینن این چشم ایبینشون بسته از چشم حسبینشون خوبه هر چی بکنید به چشم کرمش زیبا باشه آخه چه ما چی کار داریم با این آدمایی که را میریم به ما ایراد میگیرن ببینم تو فکر نمی کنی اگه یه بیس پوند وزن کم کنی تو فکر نمی کنی اگر مواتو یه کمی روشن تر کنی خب حالا یعنی به طور کلی کسی که به ما این احساس رو میده که I'm less than okay میخوام چه کنمش؟ لستن اوکی بنابراین میگه یکی از بهترین تقویت کننده ها که انت ایتر ما رو خیلی تقویت میکنه اینه که خودمونو با آدمایی که پازیتیب باند دارن همراه بکنیم پروتکت یورسلف پروتکت یورسلف 
from people who only find fault in you. بعد دیگه حالا اینا رو نمیخوام بگم این براتون یه خورده عجیبه یکی از چیزهایی که به ما حال خوش میده همیشه در اطراف خودتون بوی خوش تولید کنی گود اسمه گود اسمه برای اینکه الان تو این به اصطلاح درمان با گیاه های مثل لوندر و غیره متوجه شدن که لیمبیک سیسته یعنی همون خواستگاه عواطف حالش خوش میشه حالش خوش میشه در چند سال پیش در اواخر سالهای شست یه اطرای آوردن بیرون که اطرا گفتن که اینا سیستم سکشوال دیزایر رو خیلی تحریک میکنه ولی کن به اصطلاح انگزایتی رو خیلی بالا می برد اما یه بوای طبیعی معمولا هست اگر لازم داروهایی که لیمبیک سیستم رو آروم میکنه میتونیم استفاده کنیم انت ایترا ببخشید انتا افکار منفی دعا میکنن که شما جون نداشته باشی ورزش کنی یادت باشه دعای اونا نزو برآورده بشه واچ یور نوتریش چیزایی مثل چربی زیاد و جالبه برای کسانی که برای کسانی که اضطراب بالا دارن دایت پروتئین بالا خیلی مفید نیست توصیه نمیشه بله حالا بعد تو تو کنفرانسی که هست دقیق دکتر آمین اینا رو مطرح میکنه به این ترتیب ما الان به جایی رسیدیم که انتا رو شناسایی کردیم و فهمیدیم ما چه کار با اونا میتونیم بکنیم که اونا ضعیف شن ما قوی شیم ناک اوتشون بکنیم و حال خوش رو برای خودمون نسبتا پرمننت کنیم اینو الان اگر بیانی نکته این کورس ما به هیچ عنوان اینجا تموم نمیشه ما یه فاندیشنی رو گذاشتیم از آگست که برگردیم تمرین های عملی تری راجع به این که ما روزمره تراپیست خودمون باشیم و وقتی که خودمون رو مانیتور میکنیم اون وقت همینطوری تو سیستمی که توش داریم زندگی میکنیم تاثیر میذاریم تو این یکی دو ماهه که نمیدونین از بیکاری چیکار کنیم هر چی تو این کلاس یاد گرفتی به 7 نفر دور وریاتون هم یاد بدی برای اینکه من از یک دیگه میپرس من از یک دیگه یاد میگیرم شما از من یاد میگیرید یک دیگه هم از شما یاد میگیره این چرخه آگاهی وقتی بالا میره کل سوسایتی و این وایرومنتی که توش هستیم آگاهیش نسبت به این مسائل بیشتر میشه تنها چیزی رو که میتونم بهتون بگم اینه که یکی از بدترین چیزهایی که انت ایترا کلوفت میشن گردن کلوفت میشن هر طرفی که بیاید پانچت میکنن و میزنن ات زمین مواد مخدر و الکل. انت 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 اتوماتیک نگاتیو تاکت برای اینکه وقتی شنگولی یه حال داری وقتی منگولی یه حال دیگه داری و اون وقت این دو تا حال با هم استراب انگیزه و بدترین حاله و به همین دلیل هم هست که اکثر آدمای معتاد این وایرومنت خودشون هم مریض میکنه نه حالا بذاریم ببینیم بعد وقتی سوال جواب بله Well, we're going to talk about education, support, supplements, medicine, exercise, brain system strategies, how to keep your brain healthy as you age. We're also going to talk about sleep strategies. One of the things I'm going to tell you is that we have a very cool little, gosh, I hope they brought some, um, audio tape called Brain Train. And what we, Brain Train is a special audio tape that's made with a sound machine that produces a brain that's sleepy or a brain that's awake. So there's two tapes in it. It's, the sound machine, you can't actually hear the underlying brain waves. 
for sound waves. What you hear for the sleepy one is the sound of the surf at Kaanapali Beach, Maui. Now, I had to go there for a week to make this tape. <laughs> You're so cynical. <laughs> for the concentration tape, the only, it's, you can't hear the audio waves, but what you hear is the sound of birds singing early morning at Lake Tahoe. I had to go there for a week. <laughs> But it, it's a very cool product. The reason I'm telling you now is the bookstore is going to close at, after the next break, and I'm going to talk about it afterwards. So I just thought I'd sneak that in. All right. First principle of treatment, education. First principle of treatment. You have to educate people on what they have. Because if you don't, they won't follow through. So you encourage them to go to conferences or lectures. You teach them about it. Uh, Encourage them to get really great books on these things, like these two. I'm very fond of these books. Because they help. I mean, you know, I get letters from people all over the world saying that they're helpful. Um, encourage them to go to great websites like WebMD, Medscape. Um, we have two, Amen Clinic and BrainPlace.com. This is Gary Larson uh, on patient education. It's called in the animal self-help section. Some of the book titles are um, Do It By Instinct, Dare to Be Nocturnal. My favorite one is How to Avoid Natural Selection. <laughs> Education support. Support is critical. Many times these people are feeling isolated and alone. And emotional support helps. Emotional support may in fact be a biological treatment. Um, support groups for ADD like the CHAT organization, it's wonderful. Um, there are internet support groups. Uh, we have a forum on our website at amenclinic.com. We have hundreds of people talking to each other. Um, <clears throat> uh, group therapy can be helpful. And just to show you how helpful support could be, they took a medical illness, metastatic breast cancer, bad breast cancer, and they divided these people into two groups. One, they got good medical treatment from Stanford. The second group, good medical treatment plus one 90-minute support group a week. And that's it. That was the only difference. Medical treatment or medical treatment plus one support group a week. On average, the women that went to the support group lived twice as long. They replicated this study just recently. Same finding. Emotional support matters. You see the cover of Newsweek last week? And it was about spirituality and health. People who go to church on a regular basis live longer. When they get depressed, they get better faster. They have less headaches, less high blood pressure, and so on. And of course, it could be how you live, right? We live our life this way. But it's also about the connections and the emotional support. This is my support group. This is my son. Is sweetie, Katie Ann. They're getting married next March. Yes, she's been scanned. <laughs> the hyperactive one. I always love this picture because I just watch my son's arm around her neck. Yeah. It's, it so fits. And the middle one who is actually the sweetest one of the bunch. Well, what about nutritional treatments? How you feed these kids and adults, how you feed yourself, matters. It's a scandal how we feed people. Standard American diet, sad. Why? What do we feed kids in the morning? Pop-tarts, donuts, waffles, cinnamon rolls, sugar cereals, frozen waffles, Frozen pancakes with liquid sugar on them, maple syrup. How do you feel? Has anybody ever had, you know, two or three Krispy Kreme donuts in the morning to get going? Have you ever done that? How do you feel like a half an hour later? Stupid! You feel spacey, blah, yuck. But what are we doing to these children? And we give them frozen pancakes with syrup on it 
and orange juice, which is what? More sugar. Orange juice is liquid sugar. The little vitamin C kick to it. And then we let them wait about 45 minutes, the time for it to really kick in before they get to school. And then we go, concentrate. It's crazy. ADD kids, if you give them protein in the morning, their medication lasts longer. Think about getting rid of most of the sugar in your diet, most of the simple carbohydrates in your diet, things that have what we call a high glycemic index. Do you know what that is? Have you heard about that? Glycemic index is how quickly does your body absorb it and does it cause insulin to react to get rid of it. The highest fruit, bananas. The lowest fruit is blueberries. So you want to look for things that have a lower glycemic index. Okay? White bread is like sugar. Baked potatoes, like sugar. I mean, it's like the same glycemic index as sugar. Sweet potato is actually better. French fries, now this is going to sound very strange, French fries are better than a baked potato. Why? Because French fries have the baked potato plus fat, and so it stays in your gut longer and is absorbed. And French fries are terrible for you. So, I mean, don't go out of here and go, hey, got to go to Wendy's, got to get a big thing of French fries. No. So, protein in the morning. Canadian bacon and the eggs is much better than frosted flakes. It's actually better than raisin bread. It's better than grape nuts. Oh, I would never give my child all that fat. Why? 60% of the brain is fat. You low fat diets are bad for kids because kids' brains are developing at such an explosive rate. So what we feed them at lunch, it's a scandal. You know, it's macaroni and cheese, it's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on white bread, it's, you know, potato chips, it's, it's horrible. So what to do? Watch what they eat. You shop. Remember we talked about parenting and permissiveness? Supervise them. What do we give kids for snacks when they get home? They've had a bad day at school because they have ADD. So what do we give them as snacks because we feel badly for them? Fruit roll-ups. It's just sugar. Unless you make the fruit roll-ups yourself with a dehydrator. And then it's a little bit better, depending on what kind of fruit you put in. Right? Bananas, it's like sugar. Strawberries are better. Berries are much better, by and large. Juice, we give them juice which is liquid sugar. Give them the fruit if you're going to give them juice. I tried to send my son to school with the dark fruit and he's embarrassed he's the only kid there. So he refused to do it. Some of the kids, especially if they like, like having things a certain way, they, they just can't stand it if somebody thinks that they're different. Um, One of the things I'm going to tell you later on in preventing Alzheimer's disease is people who eat less live longer. So don't be pushing your kids to eat. I mean, give them healthy things, and if they choose not to eat, trust me, they won't die. The problem with us is we eat too much, not that we don't eat enough. So when they come home, what are reasonable snacks that will help them concentrate? Don't give them four Oreo cookies and a can of Coke. I mean, that's what people do. Sugar. Okay, so it's just like you gave them three donuts, and then you let them play video games. And what do video games do in the brain? Well, they actually increase activity in the basal ganglia, the part of your brain that produces dopamine. So the concentration chemical, dopamine, gets released when you play video games. That's why they're so intense. And why not? You can kill 40 people in the span of a minute. I mean, how exciting is that? So we've given them sugar, we've depleted their dopamine, and then we go, now it's time for you to do your chores and do your homework. And then you wonder why you're screaming at them, besides the fact that you had four Oreo cookies with them, and you have low blood sugar now. 
It doesn't make for a fun eating. Give them protein. Cream cheese and celery, or sugar-free. Peanut butter on celery. You know, you can do a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just do it in a healthy way. Whole wheat bread, sugar-free peanut butter, and um, Smucker's makes a kind of jam called spreadable fruit, which means there's no sugar added. And I swear you can't tell the difference. I mean, it tastes great. It just doesn't have extra sugar in it. I mean, why do you need to put extra sugar in peanut butter? Why do you need to put extra sugar in, you know, jam? I have no idea. Let, let me hold questions in the back. I, I don't want you guys to get your arms tired, but I want to get through this. Okay, so you can give them cheese sticks, like mozzarella. Um, cheese sticks, you can give them beef jerky, but be careful. The kind of jerky that you buy in a store is often filled with sugar. Make it at home. Get flank steak, slice it, put a little salt, pepper, and garlic on it, and dehydrate it. It tastes great. Kids like it. Um, and, you know, it's another option that you have. On top of which, as soon as you get home, you can have a healthy snack, and then you have to do your homework and you have to do your chores. If you're going to play video games, you get to do it after those things are done. Now, I'm not opposed to giving them ice cream periodically. Just don't give them ice cream right before they have to do work, where they have to think. So, the new South Beach diet, the Zone diet, Sugar Busters diet, if you want to lose a lot of weight, the Atkins diet, they're all really good diets for the right people. Now, these are people who don't have hot singulates. People have hot singulates, give them a cookie. You know, simple carbohydrates tend to be mood foods for them, but they don't concentrate better. These are people that tell you pasta, bread, potatoes, <laughs> chocolate are like mood foods for them. Their mood will be better. They won't be able to get things done. <sighs> supplements. Okay. Here's the lecture on supplements. Supplements can be great. They can be terrible. you got to match the supplement for your brain. A lot of doctors don't like supplements, don't know anything about supplements, don't use them, don't recommend them. And I think that's a mistake because I think, I believe what my professor taught me in medical school, which was, if you're going to see people, you need, if you're going to be a physician, you need to give people informed consent. Now, informed consent means you come to me with the problems that you have. I ask you my questions, do my tests. And ultimately, I come up with what I think the diagnosis is. Do we agree on what the problem is? You have to get agreement before you go forward. Do we agree? And if we agree, these are your options. And these are the pros and cons of each option you get to choose. As soon as you come into the doctor and he goes, oh, you have ADD, take Adderall. That's very bad medicine. That's not how it's supposed to be. How it's supposed to be is we give you options and you choose between the options with accurate information. Now, the fact is with supplements, they work a lot of the times. The benefits of supplements is yes, they do work if you get the right supplement for the right type. There are less side effects. They're less expensive. You never have to tell an insurance company you took them. Is that a benefit? You bet, because it may change your life insurance or your medical insurance. Now, what are the cons of supplements? So they're not as strong as medicine, by and large. Even though they're less expensive for you, they may be more expensive because they're not covered by insurance. And there's variability in manufacturers. And that's a problem. Because sometimes it'll say St. John's Wort, but it won't have much in it. Or sometimes it'll say it has ginkgo biloba, but it won't have much in it. So you have to find really good, reliable brands. And as we go through this, I'll tell you the brands that I like. Now, just because it's natural doesn't mean it's innocuous. You give St. John's work to the wrong person and make them suicidal. 
Okay? So, for the prefrontal cortex, we want to boost function in the prefrontal cortex, we'll use L-tyrosine. L-tyrosine is the amino acid building block for dopamine. These doses are adult doses, half of them for children. You have overactivity in your anterior cingulate gyrus. Will you say John's work? I love St. John's work. I think it works. Now, some of you in your heads are going, St. John's work doesn't work. I saw that story in the Wall Street Journal or in the Los Angeles Times, front page. St. John's work doesn't work. Read the article, what it said. St. John's work doesn't work for severe depression. And then if you read further, you realize this was a study done at Duke sponsored by Pfizer. And what does Pfizer make? Anybody know? Zoloft. Right away, you ought to be suspicious about the study. Immediately, you should be suspicious of the study. And then when you read it, the study makes you furious because they compared St. John's Ward to placebo in severe depression. They did not have the... What's the right word? Nerve. <laughs> they did not have the nerve to compare St. John's Ward to Zola, which is what they should have done. I mean, if you're going to say it doesn't work, compare it against something you think will work. The fact is nothing works for severe depression. Not one thing works consistently with severe depression. But because Pfizer has this huge media budget, their story was everywhere around the country. St. John's work doesn't work. was the impression many of you were left with. Well, three months later, in the American Journal of Psychiatry, there was an article from Germany comparing St. John's Ward and Zoloft. And what they found in mild to moderate depression, they both worked equally. But the people stayed on St. John's Ward because they had less side effects. And I'm going, well, this is my experience. See, I've scanned maybe 20 people on and off St. John's Ward. St. John's Ward works exactly like Zoloft. Calms down hyperactivity in the frontal level and calms it down, sometimes too far, so you become happy. And as one of the girls in our study said, I'm happy, but I'm dingier. You know, I'm like even more blonde than before, is what she said. <laughs> it's what she said. And so I'm looking in the paper, the Los Angeles Times, I get that. Did they report that study? No. I'm on the internet. Is anybody reporting that study? No? Why? Because they didn't have a big media arm. So when you get impressions about supplements or other sort of alternative treatments, you have to ask yourself, where's the impression coming from? <sighs> 5-HTP is the immediate precursor to serotonin in the brain. 5-HTP is often very helpful. You'll notice on the table we have fish oil, but we also have this cool little uh, supplement called Teen Link, which is made with 5-HTP, GABA, to sort of settle things down, and L-tyrosine to help balance frontal lobe function. We use it for the ring of fire. Now, it's soft. It's not nearly as strong as Risperdal. It's got a lot less side effects than Risperdal. Okay? And that's how we think of it. Um, limbic, we use either DL-phenylalanine, which is the amino acid precursor to norepinephrine, what stratera and desipramine work on, or we use SAMe. SAMe stands for S-adenosylmethionine. It's a methylator. It adds methyl groups to neurotransmitters in the brain and beefs up norepinephrine and dopamine. Um, it's a stimulating and, uh, supplement. And you don't give it to people who are bipolar because if you give it to people who are bipolar, you may flip them into a manic episode. There are actually reported cases of people getting flipped with SAMe. So you have to be thoughtful in how you use these. For the temporal lobe or the cyclic types, we'll use GABA. We'll also use omega-3 fatty acids. Now, it has to be molecularly distilled, pharmaceutical grade, high quality. And the three brands, again, that I like are Nordic Naturals. We brought a sample with us. Um, omega Bright and DrSears.com. There's another way to get omega-3 fatty acids, actually two other ways. One, for kids, we often use this little product called Core Omega. Core Omega tastes like orange pudding. Uh, 
high quality molecularly distilled fish oil. Or you can go to a website called kidsneedusnow.org. Kidsneedusnow.org. And you can find fish oil in ice cream. It's perfectly zoned, high quality fish oil, and you can't taste it at all in the ice cream. Now you have to have an ice cream maker at home and you make it. It's wonderful. We actually had it at the office. We had the peach kind. I had seconds. I thought it was great. Um, I mean, how much better does it get if you can't get your child to take a little capsule, give it to them, and a bowl of ice cream? Um, one of our studies before and after GABA, I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, supplements do have biological effects. Now, with medicine, uh, just a couple of thoughts. Education is really important. When I put people on medicine, I have them keep a daily log. I only start one thing at a time. I write things down for patients because they forget what you tell them. I always try to check their perception on why they're taking it. A boy last week said, you know, I take this because it prevents the prefrontal cortex deactivation that I don't like happening in my brain. Cool. Watch for changes when the meds wear off. And everything is not the medicine. I mean, you know, someone's not doing well. It's like, well, we have to change medicine. You know, my question is, are you exercising? How are you eating? What else is going on in your life? You know, if the medicine stops working and they're being molested, changing the dose of medicine is not going to change them from, you know, it's not going to help them, right? You have to figure out what else is going on in their life. Um, a lot of people tell me, well, I want to be off medicine. And I usually say that's a bad goal. Not that I'm opposed to you being off medicine. It's the goal should always be your best function, not to be off medicine. If you can do that without medicine, great, I'll help you any way I can. But let's make the goal always your best function. And some people say, well, I just want to take a little tiny bit. I understand that. But if I went to the eye doctor, and said, you know, I just want a really thin lens this year, she would look at me like I needed psychiatric care. Like, don't you want the lens that works for you? And everybody's different. Now, my hope is you'll take this information and help people exercise, eat better, so they need as little as possible, but as much as it takes. I told you we'd talk about amp therapy. And AMP therapy stands for automatic negative thoughts. The thoughts that come into your mind automatically and ruin your day. When you have anxiety or depression or ADD, you have a very high ant population. Often an ant infestation. And the ants are like coming out of your eyes and out of your ears and out of your nose and out of your mouth. They're everywhere. And they're ruining your life. Like they will ruin your kitchen. If you don't take care of them, they will ruin your life. And therapy is based on some very simple principles. The first principle, every time you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals. Every single time you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals. Whenever you have bad thoughts, angry thoughts, hopeless thoughts, helpless thoughts, your brain releases chemicals that make you feel bad. How do we know that? Well, I'm a biofeedback therapist. Anybody else here a biofeedback therapist trained in biofeedback? Two of us, three of us. It's a, it's a crime. It's such a cool therapy. If you see people and you try to help put together the mind and the body, biofeedback is a wonderful, wonderful treatment. But in it, in biofeedback, what we do is we measure your body, measure your hand temperature, your heart rate, your muscle tension, how you breathe, how much your hands sweat, brainwave patterns. We get moment-by-moment -moment measurements on your own physiology. And then we can teach you how to change it. But when we have somebody think about something that's negative, their physiology changes immediately. If you have negative thoughts, what happens to your hand temperature? It gets colder. And what happens to the sweat gland activity in your hand? It goes up. Your hands get cold and sweaty. And what happens to your muscle tension? 
goes up. And what happens to your heart rate? Goes up. And your heart rate becomes less variable. Heart rate variability is actually a sign of heart health. Your heart should be bouncing around a little bit. And what happens to your breathing rate? Goes up. And it becomes more shallow. And it happens immediately. Now what if you think happy thoughts, hopeful thoughts, positive thoughts, loving thoughts? What happens to your hand temperature? Gets warmer. And what happens to the sweat gland activity in your hands? It gets drier. And what happens to your heart rate? It gets less and your heart becomes more variable, which is a sign of heart health. And what happens? Muscle tension goes down and your breathing rate slows down but becomes deeper. Wow! How cool is that? And it happens automatically. Your body and your brain respond to every thought you have. Thoughts are automatic, they just happen. They're based on complex chemical reactions and memories from the past. And what most people don't know, they're never taught this, is your thoughts lie a lot. Especially if you have ADD, anxiety, and depression. Your thoughts lie a lot. And if you never question your thoughts, you believe them. 100%. So you often base your life on a series of lies. Because no one's ever taught you how to correct the thoughts that go through your head. Just evaluate them. I'm not talking about pie in the sky sort of thinking. I'm talking about teaching people to think accurately, to think clearly. So you have to take control. Now, many of you will recognize that this is standard cognitive therapy. Well, I'm a child psychiatrist. I had to figure out how to make this work for kids. And so we came up with ant therapy. Oh, Gary Larson helps too. The four basic personality types, this one up here, healthy brain, the glass is half full, this one a hot limbic system, the glass is half empty, this one a hot cingulate, half full, no weight, half empty, no half, what was the question? This one, temporal lobe abnormality. Hey, I ordered a cheeseburger. <laughs> so in ant therapy, you have to have ant species. These are all the ways, the different ways, that you can distort things to make them out to be worse than they really are. So these are different kinds of ants. Those that are in green are what we call red ants. Red just doesn't show up well on the slide. The first ant is what we call always thinking. That is where you think in words like always, never, every time, every one, no one. Those are overgeneralizations. I had a friend in college once who fell for this woman. It was so sad. And he asked her out, and she turned him down. And he told me later that night, he was my study partner, he said, no one will ever go out with me again. And because of that thought, he didn't ask anybody out for nine months. It wasn't that he wasn't a desirable guy, he was a great guy. But the thought drove the behavior that kept him socially isolated. And it was a lie. It was an expansion. She wouldn't go out with him, but there are lots of other women. And now, now he's married and he has four children. <laughs> labeling ants. What's a labeling ant? It's where you label yourself or somebody else with a negative term. He's a jerk. She's an idiot. She's frigid. He's borderline. He's a sociopath. As soon as you label someone, you lump them with all of the other people you have thought those feelings for. And you can't deal with them on a realistic basis anymore. You with me on that? So as soon as you call them a jerk, you put them in that category, and you can no longer deal one-on-one -on -one with this person. Now, how do psychiatrists label people? We call them borderline. What does borderline mean to a psychiatrist or a 
therapist. What does borderline mean? It means you're really sick. And you're not likely to get better. And it's not my fault. That's what it means to me. Labels are not helpful. One of my patients drew some of these for me. Mind reading ends. This is where you arbitrarily believe you know what somebody else is thinking, even though they haven't told you. Now, I'm here to tell you I have 25 years of education. And I can't tell what anybody else is thinking. A negative look from someone else may mean nothing more than they're constipated. <laughs> you don't know. And I often tell my friends or the lovely people I work with, please don't read my mind. I have enough trouble reading it myself. <laughs> oh, Dr. Amon hasn't talked to me today. He must be mad at me. It's like, please, I have like 8,000 things in my head at one time. If I'm mad at you, I'll let you know. Fortune teller. <sighs> what is fortune telling? Fortune telling is where you arbitrarily predict things are going to turn out badly, even though you have no evidence for it. I was on CNN last week. It was actually quite fun. The first time I was on CNN was 1989. I wrote an article in Parade magazine called How to Get Out of Your Own Way. And it generated 10,000 letters to our Fairfield office. I mean, it was pretty amazing. And CNN heard about it, and they called me up. Hey, would you come on our television show? And I'd never been on TV. And I already told you I tend to be a little bit anxious. And I went, OK. And so I went to Los Angeles, to where the green room, you know, CNN studio in Los Angeles. And I was sitting in the green room, waiting to go on. And all of a sudden, my heart started beating out of my chest. I could actually look at it and see it beating. I was having a palpitation. I couldn't catch my breath. My hands were ice cold and sweaty. And I had the thought, I have to get the hell out of here. And then the Catholic voice came to me <laughs> and started laughing at me. Ha, 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 ha. You treat people that have this problem. What do you tell them to do? Don't leave. First thing, you're having a panic attack, don't leave the situation. Unless it's dangerous, and CNN, 60 minutes would have been dangerous. CNN usually is not dangerous. <laughs> don't leave. Breathe. Write out what you're thinking. And so I got a piece of paper, and I wrote out these three thoughts. The first thought was, you're going to forget your name. <laughs> now, I've been on television like 50 times since then. No one's ever asked me my name. <laughs> They've always known it, because they're the ones that invited me. But I didn't know that at the time. The second thought I wrote down was, you're going to stutter. And the third thought I wrote was, two million people are going to think you're an idiot. And I realized what I was doing, is I was just believing the anxious ants that were crawling through my head. And I was freaking out and ready to run. And what I teach my patients to do, and what I did that day, was I killed those little suckers. Now, how do you kill them? Well, the first thing you do is you identify them. What are they? And all three of those guys are fortune-telling ants. You identify them. And then you play with them. Like a cat plays with a mouse before they kill them. Have you ever seen a cat play with the mouse? I mean, they play. And they scare the mouse to death. I mean, the mouse often dies from the fear. So you want to kill these little guys. And so you play with them. And so I wrote it down. You're going to forget your name. Fortune teller. And then I wrote, probably not. I've never forgotten my name. But if I do... I have my driver's license in my wallet. <laughs> and that's what you teach patients to do. Play with the thoughts. Right? If you talk to my father, he'll say, Danny, oh yeah, he can talk back. So I was not that bad at talking back to him when I was a teenager. So can I, can't I learn how to be good at talking back to me, to my own thoughts? So the next thought, you're going to stutter. Fortune teller. I wrote Probably not. Usually don't stutter. But if you do, probably hundreds of stutterers will be watching and they'll have a doctor they can relate to. 
So I'm taking away the power. I'm draining the life from this ant that is controlling me. The third thought, two million people will think you're an idiot. Fortune telling. And then I wrote probably so, low self-esteem. And right next to it, I wrote these three numbers, 18, 40, 60, which stands for this little rule. If you don't know it, you should write it down. What it says is that when you're 18, you worry about what everybody thinks of you. When you're 40, you don't give a damn what anybody thinks of you. And when you're 60, you realize nobody has been thinking about you at all. People spend their days worrying and thinking about themselves, not you. So if you're spending a lot of time worrying about what other people are thinking of you, it's a waste of time. Because they're not. And it just helped me relax. I went, okay, if they think I'm an idiot, by the next Budweiser commercial, they'll be thinking about the girls on the Budweiser commercial, not me. And it helped, and I was able to go on TV, and, you know, I wasn't, like, great, but I was able to do it. And the more I did it, the more comfortable I became. So when I was on CNN Headline News last week, I just sort of sat there and had a good time. I mean, it's fun, because you realize you can educate maybe 200,000 people at once. How much fun is that? Guilt beating ants where you ought, where you think in words like should, must, ought, or have to. I have to tell you, when you grow up Roman Catholic, like seriously Roman Catholic, like praying the rosary every day, Roman Catholic, altar boy till you're 19, Roman Catholic, um, you have to pass guilt 101. And if you go to Catholic high school, you have to pass guilt 102. And if you become an altar boy, you have to pass advanced guilt. <laughs>